Hello. Um, my name is Laura Nix. I'm a documentary filmmaker and a member of the documentary branch. And I'm really thrilled to be able to um, have this conversation with the director, Nisha Pahuja, of the documentary shortlisted film, To Kill a Tiger. Um, it was a New York Times critics pick and a winner of 21 awards, including Toronto International Film Festival, Palm Springs, Doc of Eve, and the Directors Guild of Canada. And it's very exciting that it's been shortlisted um, as one of the documentary awards for the Oscar this year. Um, the Hollywood Reporter called it easily the most amazing and important story I've seen told on screen this year. And I would say I would have to agree with that assessment. Um, for me, I was struck by two things watching the film. First, how universal this story is. Um, the risk for women and families of reporting sexual assault is still so widespread, still here in the US. And we're aware of how the risk is much greater for young Kiran and her father Ranjit, but the stigma is still felt by women worldwide. And I think every woman in the world sees this story and sees part of herself in it, even though the specifics of this story are, are different. There's a universality to this, this crisis of sexual violence. And secondly, for me, I was just so moved by the power of watching a father defend his daughter in the face of this assault, not to defend her honor, but just because it's simply wrong. And then he's, his clarity about this violence is wrong. And that's where he is, is motivated from. And uh, I was, I, it's very rare to see a film about that. And um, it was really, really moving. And it's, the film is so, you made such a, a, a sensitive and respectful film, but I'm also so struck by the clarity of your approach. There's not a hint of false drama at any moment in this film. It's just, we're just in this, um, we're in this village with this family and it's just a beautifully told story. So congratulations on this incredible film. Oh, thank you so much, Laura. Oh, it's just, it's, so it's such a highlight um, of uh, the season for me. Um, so I'm wondering if we could start with just some really basic questions, if you could speak about what drew you to this story in particular and how you got involved with it. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you said it, right? Sexual sexual violence. And, um, uh, you know, I, I was in India when the horrific incident happened on the bus in the capital when that young woman was was raped um, on the bus and then died from her died from her injuries and of course you know the entire country erupted and the entire world you know erupted and, and it became clear that there was a a, a a very serious sexual violence problem in India and you know the the previous film the film that I had made before that also looked at uh, women's rights and gender justice in India, and after the Delhi gang rape, you know, I started to think what's really needed is a film that looks at men, you know, that's looking mm -hmm. at the sort of crisis of, of, of masculinity. Mm -hmm. And so I started to I started to do research and I started to think about making a film on on men. And I came across the work of an organization called the Center for Health and Social Justice in Delhi. And about 20 years ago, uh, they started to, re you know, they realized that in order to have gender justice, they needed to work with 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 men and boys. And so I began following I began following their work. And then they had started a program. Interestingly enough, they'd started this this program for three and a half years, a gender sensitization program in the state of Jharkhand. And Ranjit, the father, was enrolled in in that program. Mm. And that is how I came across this the story. You know, that's that's how that's how I found him really mm -hmm. yeah oh that's really interesting um how did you so you met him that way and then could you speak a little bit about uh, your approach to him and the family to talk to them about making a documentary film and um yeah. how that evolved getting access to be able to film the story and in particular your conversations with her and what that was like yeah for sure so you know like usually when you're making when you're making a, a documentary, you spend time with your subjects, you find your subjects, you know, you you establish relationships with them. With with Ranjith and his family, the first literally the first time I met them, I was filming with them. 
you know, because I was filming the NGO and the NGO, you know, um, obviously they were, they were going to support him and his family. And, and so I showed up with, with my camera and uh, the activist and, you know, we asked if, if we could film this meeting and they said, yes. And then it just started to slowly, slowly uh, follow the story. And I think it took probably about two or three months, maybe a little bit longer before we started to kind of, before they started to trust me, you know, before they actually started to kind of relax and not be self-conscious, uh, not be self-conscious on camera. Um, so it was a, it was, it was a real, you know, it was a real journey. And then there was a moment when suddenly something just clicked and it became so clear that there was this deep affection and trust, you know, that, that, that was there and and it's it's never gone away it, it it's mm -hmm. just it's been there for for years now mm -hmm. and with her i that was very hard like it was it was very difficult to to film with her it was it was really it was a it was a difficult um it was a difficult process for for us to to film with her and um we were you know we were obviously really careful not to film anything that was superfluous or um, unnecessary or, you know, no interviews. So the master interview that you see in the film was mm -hmm. actually, uh, was actually done uh, after, uh, after the case was over because I was trying to make sure to not kind of re-traumatize or, you know, I was very conscious of, of, um, of, of being, of being mindful. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, did she, how did she feel about telling her story to more people? Like, what was that? Did you have a conversation with her about what it meant for her to share this story with other people? Did she want to share it because she wanted to have an impact and let other women know her story or other men know her story? Yeah. Um, when, when we were actually, you know, when we were actually filming with her, we were very sort of cautious. And at, at the time, the idea was that we were going to hide her. We weren't actually going to, we weren't actually going to reveal her, you know, so she was always going to be masked. She was always going to be blurred or there was some, you know, we tried a number of different techniques to, to hide her identity. But because it took so long for us, you know, it took so long for us to make the film. By the time we were done, she was of age. And so we started to bring up this idea of, you know, how would she feel about uh, being seen? Because she was so comfortable, you know, she was so comfortable on camera, right? Um, and so strong, you know? I mean, even at that age, even at 13, she just had this sense of uh, resilience, like just resilience, obviously, but mm -hmm. self-respect, mm -hmm. you know? She had, yeah. a, she had a very strong sense of herself and what she deserved, you know, mm -hmm. like she, she knew that she deserved justice. Like at that age, she just had that tre tremendous wherewithal. Mm -hmm. And so we started to ask her how she would feel about it. And she said, well, let me watch the film and I'll tell you. And she watched the film. And it was after watching the film that she decided that she wanted to, she wanted to come forward, you know? And the, uh, when I, uh, when I asked her the next day, like she saw the film and her parents and, and she, you know, they all agreed. And then I called her, you know, just to make sure that she was, that, that she was okay. And I asked her why she decided that she was going to do this and, and come forward. And, and she said it was because she felt that her 13 year old self needed to be celebrated. And she wanted the world to see that, that child, because she herself couldn't believe how, how courageous, you know, how courageous she was. And she wanted the world to, the world to know her. And, yeah. That's incredible because, you know, if I close my eyes and I have to think about the image that sticks with me, it's yeah. the bows in her hair. Yeah. It's when she's braiding her hair and you see this little girl putting, you know, braiding her hair and putting bows in it. And the contrast between that and the clarity that she has and, and that self-possession that you describe, yeah. they're both happening at the same time, but to yeah. see that that degree of clarity in a 13 year old is, is really, it's, it's incredible. And it's, yeah. it's very, it's very moving and inspiring. Yeah. I think. Yeah. How long did you film? 
Um, I, we filmed for three and a half years, mm -hmm. uh, but this particular story, the, the story mm -hmm. of Rajiv and his family, the trial itself was 14 months. And then we did a little bit of filming uh, with them after, you know, like, so the interview with her, uh, some of this, like the scene of her braiding her hair, that was also all done afterwards, you know, when we were film, when we were actually filming with her during the case, it was just whatever was necessary, you know, there was, there was, we, we just basically, whatever was happening is, is, is what we filmed. And then we mm -hmm. flesh things out afterwards. Mm -hmm. And then um, plus the edit, how, how long was the whole pro uh, process of making the film? Yeah. It was eight, it was eight years. So it was a year and a half of research, mm -hmm. then three and a half years of filming, and then three years of, three years of editing. <laughs> amazing. It's a really long, long process. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Totally amazing. Yeah. Um, so I would imagine that, you know, after you gain access to the family, then there's this this whole other process of being able to film in the village and and film the court case. Could you speak a little bit about what that process was like and um, what you encountered? Was there hostility? Did you feel any risks to you while you were telling that part of the story? Yeah, um, you know, with, with the with the actual uh, court case and being being at court, that was never that was never a problem, you know, because there's always media um, at court. There's always there's always press. So that was never was never an issue. We of course were never allowed inside. Uh, we were never allowed inside the inside the the courtroom, which is so fascinating, actually. And that and I mean that's really a credit to Mike, my my editor, right? I mean the fact that we were never allowed inside, and yet I think you never feel. The, the need to go in and I think you know a lot of that has to all obviously do with you know Mike and then also just Ranjit being the kind of person who's whose face kind of conveys a lot of emotion and and, and a lot of drama and, and you're just you know you're, you're with him emotionally uh, in terms of in terms of filming with the village and in, in the community that was that was obviously extremely problematic and and it didn't start off that way you know it started off that we were I would we weren't welcome it wasn't like we you know it wasn't like they were necessarily open but they weren't closed either and there were definitely times where it started to feel like maybe there was a possibility of building a relationship even with the boys um, families and some of the other people in the community but it, what what obviously you know what really became clear was as as the trial wore on and as the case wore on and as it became apparent to the community and to the villagers that the family was not going to drop the charges they were going to pursue justice then it started to become very very tense and then of course you know I mean there's death threats against him and his family and then you know the 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 community is is uh, really adamant and they come into the home and they demand that that we leave so which was a definitely a, a scary it's a scary moment yeah it's an incredible moment in the film when they come in and I was um I was super worried about the family and also about you did you also experience threats from the local community um just just in that particular that particular day we did yeah for sure mm -hmm. yeah that, okay. that was and you know of course what you don't see on you know what you don't see or hear is because you know obviously we turn all of our, our equipment off and what happened was we kind of managed to calm everyone down and then eventually it was a strange thing you know it just sort of moved in these moved in these waves right where we kind of people were very angry we managed to calm them down and then they started to get angry again and we calmed them down and then the men started there were lots of men that started coming and then mm -hmm. that's when it got really scary and the women had to, the women sort of, you know, took us, took us to our vehicle and, and let us out because it was uh, a bit of a powder keg for sure. Yeah. So the women intervened to create safety. They did. <laughs> <Basically>. <laughs> so. <laughs> they did. Yes. Yeah. Um, I was really curious about the Sri John Foundation. I'm wondering if you could, are there a lot of um, organizations like this in, in India? Yes. How common are they and, and um, what role are they playing in Indian civil society right now? Yeah, huge. I mean, yes, absolutely. You know, this is the, the for me, the, the critical thing about India. Maybe it's not dissimilar in that sense, you know, to, to the United States. Um, but 
organizations like that, like, you know, uh, NGOs, civil society groups, there is such a robust movement, you know, in, in terms of all kinds of justice and equality, not just gender justice, but caste justice, you know, uh, poverty, I mean, there's education, uh, there's a very, very strong movement and has been traditionally from, you know, from, from independence, right, from before 1947. So they've played a really key role for, for, for years. And um, I think in, in a lot of ways, they're, they're, they're sort of the greatest hope you know, mm -hmm. they play a much more substantial role than, than government. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and when you, what, can you speak a little bit about the process of filming with them and what that conversation was like? And it, 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 could you film for so long, what the evolution yeah. was like over, over time? Yeah. Uh, well, they were extremely, they were extremely open, you know, uh, and and they they understood the importance they understood the importance of this case mm -hmm. like for their work and they also understood the importance of us documenting this case and documenting their their work for mm -hmm. for for many reasons. I think what happened with them though is you know that moment when the moment when um, uh, when the community sort of turns you know turns against us in 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 the in the in the village and they they come into the home and then you know i go to the shrijan foundation and i tell them look this is this is what's happened and it's going to impact you know it's going to impact your work i think that's when it became a little bit you know it was it was difficult so they asked me yeah they and i never went back into the community i never went back into into the village mm -hmm. i think they wanted me to stop filming but i was not going to stop filming mm -hmm family didn't want me to stop filming you know mm -hmm. that was for me the most important thing and that was you know I, I have to say Laura I mean throughout this process it was amazing you know because the fact we were always checking in with the family we were always mm -hmm. making sure that they were okay you know that they were okay with us filming because we knew what was happening the tension was tension was rising it was becoming dangerous and so we would always ask them, are you sure, you know, are you mm -hmm. sure you want us to, are you sure you want us to do this? Are you sure? And don't feel the need to kind of fight to keep the case going, you know, mm -hmm. for the camera or for the mm -hmm. NGO, you know, the work that, that the investment that there was a, we were very conscious of them not feeling beholden to us mm -hmm. or, or the, the NGO, you know, mm -hmm. and they weren't. And uh, Rajiv told me, uh, afterwards, right, and on on camera after a very long period of time, part of the reason that they wanted us to keep filming is that a we actually offered them a kind of protection from the community, right? We were actually, yeah. in a way, um, protection, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and and in the court system, you know, just because of the caste system because of Ranjit's uh, poverty and, and his and his status, his class status, we gave them a kind of legitimacy. We ensured that their case was going to be taken seriously. Because we were mm -hmm. we were we were bearing witness, you know, we were mm -hmm. we were following. So they knew. That thank you for saying that because that was a question I had was was there a moment when Ranjit said, no, I just can't, you know, and because uh, that's quite common that people say in the midst of a process, uh, no, I'm done. And then you figure out a way back. But there is sometimes a stopping point. It sounds like he never said that to you. No, he he actually did. Uh, he does Once? actually at one point. Yeah, he, he does. Um, and it's actually in the film. So he does at one point yeah. say he's not sure if he can if he can keep this going. And yes. Yeah, but I thought that was like the was that the film or was that the case or was it both? It it was actually the case. It was the it was the pressure because right. you know, there was the yes. there was the, the poverty. There was the kind of he was getting into debt as a, as a result of this. Yep. And I don't know if you remember that scene, you know, where he's kind of saying, "I've got this really small head, but I've I've got this huge pressure in inside of me." And, yes, and I do remember I that. I can't breathe. Yep. Yeah. So it was just it was just everything all of it right but the reason he kept going and this was the amazing thing about that family right is that I think when 
when he was feeling weak, when he was feeling kind of dejected, I think his wife really emboldened him. She's mm -hmm. very fierce mm -hmm. and very powerful. And I think also her, Kieran, she never wavered. Like her commitment, her decision to, to do this never wavered, you know? So I think he was in, very much inspired. Like he even says that at that scene and by the roadside, right? Like that he just was very much inspired by and just inspired by this child, you know, and, and her and her courage. So. That's you feel that because at that you know that that moment when he says, "I don't know that I can go on." Thank you for clarifying that because it is. Um, I always understood it to be, "I don't know that I can go on with this case," which makes complete uh, sense, right? Yeah. It's, it's yes. it's yeah it's so um because it's it's terrifying you know you re you realize they're living in a really small community and the yeah. amount of hostility yeah um that's that's coming from yeah. the community about protecting these boys oh you know and the future of the boys against what it means for yeah. the for the girl is it's so obvious it's so palpable it's it's just a, a, a tension that you, you very successfully keep going throughout yeah. the entire film you introduce it early you set it up you build it over time and then we're just like in that tension the whole it, sure. it's a really yeah. important yeah. part of I, I think of how yeah. of how you went about um creating well, I mean they were in that tension right Laura that was their yeah. reality that was what they were you know that's what they were experiencing and you know just like what you what you were saying at the very beginning of of this where you where you talked about sort of the universality of this you know i've got friends who are who have survived child sexual abuse mm -hmm. in canada you know and in the united states and there was this they weren't allowed to talk about it mm -hmm. because it would create a rupture in the family yep you know and and so that's kind of exactly the situation in in this film, right? It was it, and the family was the village, you know, because those communities, that's how they, that's what it is, right? It's an extended family, these these communities. So it's the same, you know, the same story. Story, right? Yeah, it's the same story. Yeah. Um in in your other film, The World Before Her from 2012, you you're also exploring the dreams of young women. And yeah. I, I'm wondering, um, were there and, and and not only the dreams of young women, but the cultural barriers barriers that are facing these young women to achieve their dreams, what those obstacles are. I was I was wondering if there was something that you took from the experience of making that film that influenced the way you went about making this film. You know, like yeah. what did you take away from that experience as a director that yeah. The, the, you know that that had you like go about something differently or the same like what was uh how did it inform this this film such a great question for sure and you know it's it's like it's it, and this is you know the experience that we all have right as mm -hmm. filmmakers as creators mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter what we're creating but it's uh, you know we ourselves as creators are on a journey there's a there's a trajectory Absolutely. that our lives are taking and and that trajectory and what how we are evolving obviously impacts our work and, and plays itself out in our work. And I think for me, the experience of making the world before her was so, um, it was so eye-opening. And I think what it made me realize is that I had no right to judge another culture or mm. another way of being or the mm -hmm. way people think that is different from different from mine. Mm -hmm. I had absolutely no right to judge, you know? Mm -hmm. And and that that um you know as as we are as individuals on a certain kind of trajectory or a certain kind of mm -hmm. journey, you know, so are countries, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the way we've evolved now here in terms of human rights and our understanding of certain issues you know, India might be somewhere else, right? But it, but, but that doesn't mean it's not also on the same on path, you know? That's and right. so, so I have, I, I feel like I, I, I cannot, um, mm -hmm. I can't be judgmental and, and, 
the anger I think that used to sort of define a lot of me as a as a human being you know when I was younger uh, that sort of activist kind of fire right mm -hmm. uh, that I think has um softened and 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 maybe the approach is much more philosophical and and I would like to believe you know just more sort of empathetic and 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 compassionate you know the importance of of compassion I think is something that the world before her taught me well and I think we feel that in this film because you there's an empathy and a compassion in the film for everyone because even when you're speaking to the men in the village and some of the women from the village who are saying outrageous things like they, you know, she needs yeah. to marry one of the rapists or, you know, what was she doing? Um, you know, being at this wedding, even the lawyer is you know, saying, yeah. saying these types of things, yeah. you know, the defense lawyer is not even from the village. There's, there's a matter of factness. And, and we, I think when we, we hear that, we just, there's a sense of this is where they are. Mm -hmm. this is exactly. where they are this is where they live this is the culture they live in and you're not um vilifying them you know and you're not throwing them under the bus you're 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 giving us a portrait of a place in a very specific moment in time and um we really yeah. we really feel that we we see each one as it is and you're i don't i think you're not judging you're ex you're yeah. you're showing it to us and you're witnessing it and you're sharing what you're witnessing with us. There's a very clear point of view in the film, right? You're yeah. not, you clearly are not just like, well, here it is. You make up your own mind. You know what you believe. The film has a very clear message, which is that um, women should not have to experience this violence yes. and the yes. culture has to change and, and yeah. men yeah. have to change so that they don't feel like there's permission for them to engage in this violence anymore. Um, yeah. But I think yeah. that, there's a tone that you achieve in your edit of of this kind of non-judgmental and very compassionate approach and it starts with the shooting even i think yes, or, absolutely you know it, could you absolutely because you know it's like um uh it's energy <laughs> mm. you know i mean mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. it, it is right i mean e everything that we are capturing um every relationship is rooted in a feeling and um mm -hmm. you know it's it's how something is being framed it's it's how it's it's how we're feeling it's what we're exuding you know it's what my dp is exuding right mm -hmm. it's yeah it's all um it's it's a it's a real kind of collective experience right because you what you're what you're capturing in a way like that footage is life right it's, it's right it's organic it's actually um you can feel it right there's there's something palpable you know there, there's something there's something palpable about it right so Absolutely. and I, I think with 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 me often uh with the um the, the person who shot the film is my husband and then the the sound recordist is a friend of ours anita a very well-known indian sound recordist and Murnal is indian and you know we've been working together for years right so we have a particular kind of you know we just have a particular shorthand and a particular sort of a shared kind of philosophical uh approach you know so i think it's it what you feel is sort of an amalgamation of a lot of people's a, a lot of people's uh belief systems you know yeah. yeah and that's right because there's there's also something about there's clearly in in the 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 formal approach to the filming there's time that's given to the silences mm -hmm. there's there's a real attention to the glances that people are giving to each other and yeah. there's you know we're we're with them we're with everyone every single place where you're filming we're, we're you're placing us there right you're not doing flashy camera stuff you're not um you're keeping us you're keeping us close to the people and and which i think means that we're emotionally connected very effectively i'm wondering in the edit what was the most difficult challenge for you there's always a couple things that are just really hard yeah. every film they're very particular and i'm just wondering what yeah. this that was yeah yeah for sure with, with this one there were, there were two things there was a that we wanted we were stuck on making a particular film you know the film that I had set out to make which was this big kind of treatise on on masculinity you know mm -hmm. which was going to 
uh, weave three different storylines. So Ranjit's storyline with two others, you know, mm -hmm. that was really, I was determined to kind of make this film and I convinced my editors and we were all like, oh yes, this is the film that we had to make. And it was only after two years where we realized this is, we, we've just, we just have too much material and, and this, you know, we're, we're, we're making two separate films. This is the mm. problem. That's why the, the approach wasn't working. So it was pivoting. And then I think once we did actually make the decision to just focus on this one family and their story, which was the wisest decision that, that we could have made, I think it was about finding the rhythm of the film, like then, you know, figuring out what this film wanted, wanted to be. And I'll never forget it, you know, because it's actually Mike, who my editor, who's so brilliant, who realized what the issue was. And, you know, I kept saying to him, I think we're just editing too fast. I think our cuts are too quick. I think we need to just slow everything down. But I couldn't understand why I was feeling this. And, find, you know, he figured it out. He sort of said to me, he said, you know, the reason we're feeling this way is because we're not following Ranjit's rhythm. And the ah. film is demanding Mm -hmm. to follow his pace mm -hmm. he has to guide he has to guide this process and mm -hmm. as soon as we figure that out you know as soon as he figured that out suddenly it just really it just sort of opened up and and everything just became you know what it what it for us what it felt like it it needed to be so yeah well, and, and clearly the, it's always about the diagnosis and the edit right and that's yeah. and, that's, and that and yeah. that's correct right because we because he he goes fast and then he kind of stops and then sometimes he goes very slowly yeah. and and we, it's very clear that we are going with him you know so yes. you, you absolutely yes you, you found that yeah. um can you speak a little bit about um how Kieran is doing now and how the family is doing now and has there been any changes in the village afterwards yeah yeah for sure so uh she is she's now almost 20 and she's in she's studying she's in she's in college but I think she's trying to figure out you know uh, what she wants to do with her life like you know what's in, in the film there's this scene at the end the at the end right the text is she wanted she wants to be a police officer and that was like you know what she really wanted to do for the longest time but that's <laughs> changed now now she's not sure what she wants to do so you know we're, we're having conversations we're having conversations about that and um the family is the, Rajit and the family are fine. You know, they're they're living in the community. Things are starting to things have started to heal. So the the fathers are speaking to each other, and they have been for quite some time. Ranjit and you know the, the the men's fathers. Everything seems to be peaceful and and kind of gone back to normal, in spite of the fact that there is this kind of looming high court case. And then, you know, if that sort of actually. Uh, if you know if the judge does decide to hear the case, then it, I think things will shift again, and they'll you know they'll obviously they'll 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 be conversations. But we're actually going to be doing we're going to be doing a big impact. We're doing impact work uh, with mm -hmm. the film in India and also mm -hmm. you know globally. Uh, so one of the things that we really want to do is to actually work with the community, you know, like actually. Uh, work with organizations to somehow help to kind of heal to ensure you know that the the healing that has taken place over the years actually remains you know and one of the things that like I don't know if you feel this Laura when you when you make your films but it's it's like um, I feel that that community gave us something mm -hmm. you know they they gave us uh a, a teaching you know they they gave us something that we can that we can learn from right mm -hmm. and so it it feels like it's my responsibility and you know the organization's responsibility to take this and to actually you know the first site of kind of healing would be would be the community from from, from which it, it comes from so that's some of the work that we're, we're planning on doing that's incredible it's it's so hard to continue that impact work after the film it, yeah. it, I've done it and it's really um it's yeah. it's it's the real work afterwards it's like a whole it other is. project so kudos to you for continuing yeah. that, that battle because um it's it's gonna make a huge difference and I think that's that's the gift right they showed you evolution they showed you change and yeah. and that changes 
slow, but yeah. it's happening. And that's clear that your film is now part of that evolution and change moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's inevitable, like change is inevitable. I'll just tell you one really quick story. I don't know if, if, if you, if you know this, I don't know if we Please. talked about it, but, but you know, the ward member, the, the guy on the motorcycle, you know, the orange shirt, the, the orange shirt yes. guy with the sunglasses and uh, yeah. who was supposed to testify and gave Ranjit a really, really hard time. So we showed the film to the ward member a few months ago and mm -hmm. we, he watched the film with um, a number of activists and uh, we were we were all kind of thinking, oh God, he's going to hate it, and you know, there's going to be issues. And he loved the film, like absolutely loved the film, and said for him, after watching it, he felt ashamed of himself, and he felt that the community needed to see the film so that they could see what they put the what they put the family through, what they'd subjected the family to. So, you know, it's like, wow, I think it's just that uh, they were able to empathize. That's the, uh -huh. that's the key with her and with the family and so is that the plan now do you think that he'll try and make it possible to do a screening for the for whole sure. community absolutely yeah for sure he will and I think hopefully he'll come with us to screenings that we do in India you know like hopefully he'll also be part of the impact work that that, that we do that would be that would be amazing you know I mean who knows that's he may not but like if, if he would that would be pretty incredible you know? that's 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 amazing and, yeah. and 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 no that's really amazing and and I think it speaks to the power of the film that he could see the film yeah and 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 have compassion in this way right even yeah. though he's able to judge himself um the fact that the the, the film is told in such a way that because it's so even-handed and I think if it wasn't he might not be able to do that yeah. but I think yeah. it, I think it speaks to your skill in 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 telling a story that that allows everybody in from where from where they sit right and even he can see how he needs to be able to change in the future that's incredible but maybe it also thank you Laura but maybe it's also just about the fact that as human beings we have that capacity inside of mm -hmm. us right yeah like we, we just all have that we all have that capacity mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's also mm -hmm. it's also I think that it's just inherent so mm -hmm. yeah. we do we, we do and yes. um you know and and it's you know you sh you show you told the story about that capacity I think I think that's really what the you know in many ways like you could speak about all the things that the film is about but on some meta level the film is about our capacity to change yeah Yes. Um, yes. Thank yeah. you so much for had this conversation you, today. And thank yeah. you so much for this beautiful, beautiful film and uh, for sharing it with the world. Thank you. What a great conversation. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Me too. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much.